the Home Keepers. Oh, I hope you're having a wonderful day today. And I'm so glad you could be there. And if by chance you were just channel surfing, please stay with us. Uh, my name is Arthelene Rippey and the name of the program is Home Keepers. And we are very much interested in your home being the best it can possibly be. And that really is, it's very important that the people in the home are the best they can be and they are the best they can be when they have that good relationship with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. So welcome all of you, young, old, and those who are new and those who are uh, regular viewers. We welcome all of you. And I'm delighted today to again have uh, Mr. Patrick Morley. Uh, Dr. Patrick Morley actually has, I believe, as far as I know, the largest men's ministry, um, in, certainly in the United States, possibly in the world. And last time he was with me I asked him to hang around so we could talk a little bit longer so I'm going to show you that conversation in my opinion uh, the situation in the family today there's an awful lot of work that needs to be done in the lives of, of the men and you'll find in some communities uh, you know a young boy will father a child and leave and real father deficit and so what we want to do is make certainly the Christian men stronger and find their place in the kingdom. And so that's what uh, we will be talking about. Also, I'm going to join Stephanie. Have you ever seen those marvelous turtles uh, candy, you know, with the, the pecans and the caramel and the chocolate? We're going to make those today exactly like you might buy in the store. But before I do, I want to remind you, we are viewer supported. And that means uh, that you good people out there have been keeping us on the air for many, many years. And so um, our 800 number is 1-800-229-0059 if you'd like to give that way. Or if you uh, just write to us at Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, we will be glad to uh, receive your gift and God will bless you for it. Isn't that right, Stephanie? Yes, ma'am. I'm child? wonderful. How are you? Good, good. I remember, I think I remember, I was very young, the first time I had one of these turtle candies and I thought I'd died and gone to mm -hmm. heaven. And now we can make them. And now we can make them, Easily, yes. easily. So you're going to spray the pan because oh, that's yeah. your job. Yeah. And no one is going to take it from up. me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so this... Stephanie's motto is you spray everything. Everything. Yeah. But this you definitely spray. Yeah. This is so super easy. Mm -hmm. These are just whole pecans and you just make um, little triangles. Mm -hmm. You can grab some and we can make them together. Okay. Make little triangles here. How is your Christmas stuff going at this time where we're getting ready for well, Christmas? We're ahead of schedule. I'm a happy Isn't girl. Isn't that wonderful? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, let's do two more. All right. You do one more and I'll do one more. I was reading just this week that, sorry about that, I don't want a broken one. <laughs> uh, I eat all the broken ones. Um, that nuts are so good for they you. They are so good for you. Because they have the healthy fats. Mm -hmm. I need another another whole one. Yeah. Got it? The healthy fats for your brain. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we just have caramels that we unwrapped, mm -hmm. and we're just going to stick it right on the center. You would think you wouldn't have to tell them to unwrap, I'm, but you know you what? You never know. Always throw a cloth, you know, always. You never know. So you're going to have the oven at 300 degrees. Mm -hmm. And you're just going to throw these in the oven for about nine minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the caramels melt. Ta-da! Look how much cheaper this would be yes. if you want to give the... Okay, now it's stage two here. So stage two, we have the caramels melted. I have a cup of Hershey's chocolate. I think you got dark chocolate, Well, didn't of you? course I yes. did. In a um, teaspoon of shortening, we just melted it in the well, microwave. I figured out the dark chocolate is a vegetable, so. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. So it's kind of a salad. But um, a teaspoon of shortening, and then just melt, melt it in the microwave like every 30 crazy. seconds. <laughs> You're crazy. Yeah, no? you have to. <laughs> yeah, you have to. It really kind of melts slower than you might think. But be careful because if you overdo it, it will just get hard mm -hmm. and you won't be able so to do it. So you pull it out and you stir it up stir a little bit. So here's the melted caramels, and all you do is you take the chocolate and you j nicely put it That's over. That's all you do, That's friends. all you do. And then we put ours in the refrigerator. We made which some. You have to be very careful of your dental work when they come out. Yeah, and I, they're just in the fridge. We left these a little too long, yeah. I think. You just want to put them in there to, to just harden so they up just the chocolate. Harden up just a little bit. Look at that. Uh -huh. That's it. And 
here's the finished product, and I'm telling you, those look as good as you'd find in the store. Yeah, look, you took my half-bitten one off. Well, I know. <laughs> I thought that was kind of tacky to show well, the audience. I, had, I took a bite. Mm -hmm. It's getting softer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, was it last year or the year before that was such a life-changing for you? It was the year before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And look where you are today as to where you... This is such a good time of year to, and I know I've already started mm -hmm. looking at things you want to change, and then you begin to change them. Yep, we're already at the beginning of the year planning to get our estate in order. Mm -hmm. You have those great books that you offer. Mm -hmm. We need to get our estate in order. We need to get our wills in order. We need to get our, you know, planning done for the, you know, for the, if something happens to us. So that's our goal at the beginning of the year. Yes, and I, I congratulate you because a lot of people do not think of it at your age, and it's it's a good thing to get it done. Well, and you know, if something so. happens, I don't want all of our money to go to the state. I mm -hmm. want it to go to our children, where it's you know mm -hmm. where it's supposed to go. And if you don't have a will, I know the state gets yeah. a lot of it. Yep. So, so um, probably you got the information on this recipe, but. Um, I just think this is just a huge success. It looks yes, exactly look like you'd it. buy it's in the wonderful. store. They're, they really are and beautiful. You just pull them off and eat them, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, stay, uh, stay with us because you're going to hear a gentleman that really I appreciate so much. I'm glad God sent him our way, and I hope he will come back again. His name is Patrick Morley. You'll want to hear what he has to say, so stay right there. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, please send your request along with a gift of $5 or more to Home Keepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. Well, I thank you for hanging around to talk to me a little bit longer, but oh, I'm sure we have a lot of viewers who uh, this is the first time to meet you. So I want to go over your history a little bit. Uh, this is, uh, you head a ministry that's to men and it's a lot bigger than most people could ever dream that you'd have a Bible study and through webcast and so forth, 10,000 men are being discipled. And it's good for us to know that, for the rest of the church yeah. to know that. Yeah. Well, it is. It's been fun. So, <clears throat> so uh, I guess this is not, not to uh, to you know talk too much about it. Mm -hmm. But uh, Man in the Mirror, since uh, 1991, we've helped 35,000 churches impact 12 million men. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have relationships with most of the denominations, and our our vision is for every church to disciple every man. Now, of course, what we mean is every willing church mm -hmm. <laughs> to disciple right. every willing man. Uh, but the mission, how we go about that on a day-to-day -day basis, is we, we have area directors mm -hmm. in local regions who are helping churches. It's a church consultancy, mm -hmm. and we have a model, and they go into the churches, and they help the church implement this process, because the churches already have ways to bring get people together mm -hmm. and content, but uh, they uh, often don't have a, a process to build a sustainable ministry to all the men of the church over right. time. So that's what we help them do. And by the way, we're hiring these area directors, 330 of them. We're uh, uh, 80 strong right now, and so we are hiring. And so if there are men who are listening or uh, people listening who uh, know a man somewhere, anywhere, mm -hmm. a brother-in-law mm -hmm. or whatever, that, that might be interested in exploring a full-time uh, career in men's discipleship, they can go to areadirectors.org and get all the yes, information. Yes, and that's on the screen right now, and uh, we will leave that up and... and also, it can take them to other websites, uh, yeah, like they, Man in the Mirror, and, and you Man, have your own They can get website. to Man in the Mirror uh, from there, yeah. Uh, before we get into this book I want to talk about, I'd, I'd like to stress the importance that this ministry has specific tools, know-how, that a lot of the maybe local church leadership will not have. And I'm... I'm warmed by the fact that you're going through the local church because that's that's going to really uh, bring the lasting results I oh believe. yeah we, we only work with churches yeah. uh, we're not uh, we're not interested in mm -hmm. in uh, working with somebody who then doesn't have the infrastructure you to know a cowboy it. out there with his yeah. own thing yeah. and um, <clears throat> also uh, the statistics are very high 
of uh, the the longevity and the yeah. uh, when men come into maybe a lot of them come into the kingdom, but others are just uh, discipled with a know-how. Yeah. You know, our, our pastors today, and they're supposed to be everything. They're supposed to be contractors. They're supposed to be bankers. They're supposed to be teachers. They're supposed to be psychologists and counselors and all. And they can't do that. So here you come along with a specialized ministry, and uh, it's a great thing for a church to take part. Well, you know, uh, the culture is, uh, we were talking about in a previous show, the culture is shifting dramatically. Now, it's interesting. People think that, that Christianity is on uh, the decrease and non-Christianity is on the increase. That's not true. Christianity is booming. But the, the, the thing is, is that uh, America was, was uh, led by the cons a moral consensus of Judeo-Christian values up until maybe 40 years ago, whatever, whatever mm -hmm. date you pick. Uh, you know, the abortion ruling. It's in my lifetime, for sure. Yeah, certainly. And, uh, and, but, but here's the thing, Christians have always been a minority. It's just that the minority controlled the, or set, if you will, the, uh, the, uh, the values for mm -hmm. the, the nation. That has, that's what's broken up. Yeah. But Christianity is actually responding and growing now. And so it's very sad. But can you ever visualize getting the, this culture right without getting the church right? Listeners, I mean, you can't, no right? Mm -hmm. Well, if that's true, can you ever visualize getting the uh, church right without getting families right? Well, that's not going to no happen. Mm -hmm. And can you ever picture getting families right without getting marriages right? Well, that's Family Systems Theory 101, page mm -hmm. one. Of course not. <laughs> and then can you ever visualize getting uh, marriages right unless we get you women fixed? I mean, let's face it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. I mean, really, yeah. uh, seriously. So, like, every now and then a woman does rip her family apart, but even then it's usually after years of emotional neglect. It, it really is about the men. So get men right. You get marriages right, you get marriages right, you get families right, you get families right, you get churches right, you get churches right, and then you really can have an impact Yeah, and the Bible the says we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. That's right. And Satan knows if he can shoot the head, <coughs> yeah. he's got the rest of the body. Yeah. And um, don't get mad at me, but God designed for the men to be yeah. the leaders and the yeah. head. So yeah. uh, you can take that up with him. But there's a sensitivity that's involved here. It's not like... Other oh, no. performance-based religions where women are, you know, treated like oh. ch chattel. I mean, you know, so. Yeah, you I know, mean, we, we have a Islam, they take my car keys away, you know. I couldn't be good. And don't put a burqa, burqa on me because I, I wouldn't do well. I would not do well. <laughs> Too old to learn. I want to talk about this book. Let's do it. It's Christianity for You. And uh, all I can say, it's, it's one of the finest I've ever read, and I asked him before we roll tape, is this a book on apologetics? And basically, it is, but it's one we can understand. Yeah, yeah, so uh, most of the apologetic books, I mean, I've, I have a seminary degree, I've read most of these books, and, and uh, but they're often so dense that a, a layman can't actually read it. Mm -hmm. This is written in terms that a, a layman can, can understand. and and. You know, if you think about, the reason I wrote the book is you have all these people coming to church every Sunday, and what's the one question? I mean, if somebody actually gets up and s says, well, I think I'll visit a church, what is the problem they're trying to solve the question they're asking? Well, in one way or another, they're trying to s figure out, you know, is, is this Christianity thing for me? And so that's why I called the book is Christianity for You. But here's the problem. The pastor can't preach that particular sermon every Sunday. Right. So what I wanted to do is give churches a resource that they could uh, give out to visitors or, or anybody could give mm -hmm. out to their friends and so forth. And that's why we, we don't, you can buy, you can get it on Amazon for the full price, but you can also, uh, I, I, I want to give everybody that wants a copy of that one free, and then uh, I'll tell you how to do that in a second. But then also we have those available in cases of 48 for $39. That's about 80 cents a piece. So you can get them out like Frisbees. Right, and, and the, but the free one is a download. Yeah. from your computer and I, I know all of our viewers yeah. don't have a computer but yeah. uh, those who are computer savvy uh, let's put that website back up and we'll just leave it up and you can go there and well they get can the go information. to I tell you what they can do they can go to patrickmorley.com uh, this is late breaking news That's up everybody there, yeah they can go to patrickmorley.com and uh, then just click on the book and there's a, a link there to a free downloadable mm -hmm. version and then also a link to being able to buy these by the case to give out okay um, you know what I like this about the first question uh, for that 
non-believer and you find out is Christianity for you, uh, the question, why am I so restless? Yeah. Um, which you and I know leads you to the fact that we all have a God-shaped vacuum there that only He can fill. Mm -hmm. But you take them through a, a series, a process of elimination maybe, uh, starting out with um, the secular, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, what, what, what do you mean by that term in this book? Okay, so uh, I would like to say that I'm, I'm the brilliant person that came up with this, but I found this in Paul, I found this in C.S. Lewis, I found this in Kierkegaard. They have these different names, but uh, everybody seems to be able to identify these kind of like four major systems, mm -hmm. belief systems or, or world views. I called them uh, worldly, moral, religious, and then Christian. And so everybody starts out uh, with a, the, a worldly system, and <clears throat> especially you know in your teens and college years, if you go to college, you know you want to uh, prove yourself, you want to get something, you want to get somewhere, you want to make money, mm -hmm. you want to whatever. Mm -hmm. And so, but everybody that's ever <clears throat> pursued uh, success from a worldly perspective knows that uh, whether you get what you want or you don't, it still ends up feeling very futile. I, I had them. I had the. I, I met every goal that I ever set for myself. Now I was in a good. Economy. And you were still restless. And, right. But the, the more I got, uh, the more I re earned, as it were, the more frustrated and, and irritable I was. I, I was miserable. I got everything I ever wanted in life and was miserable. It's like Solomon. Yeah. Which I think is why. His stories in the Bible. Oh yeah, and Solomon, I, you know, you go through Ecclesiastes and he asks every question, answers yeah. it and everything, and at the very end of it, this is what you people ought to take to heart, the wisest man who ever lived, except for Jesus Christ. At the end of that book he says, and what is the, what is the entire duty of man to, to obey God and keep his commandments? Yeah. It's just, there it is. But we're going to take the next step, which is uh, morals, yeah. to be morally right, and I like your quote from C.S. Lewis in there because he has a word I never heard before, <laughs> oughtness, oughtness. <laughs> that I ought to do this or I yeah. ought not do that. But, but yeah. when you enter that <clears throat> moral phase, I'm going to moral phase. I'm going to do right. Yeah. I'm going to be right. Uh, it's what I ought ought to do or I ought not to do. Well, every human being does have within them this innate sense, this God-given sense that there are certain things I ought to do and there are certain mm -hmm. things I ought not to do. And uh, well, so, but when you're tied up in a worldly system, you're kind of just uh, brushing those things aside. But mm -hmm. when you get tired of this worldly system, you start saying, you know, I need to evolve, I need to progress. And so there's this, these are not just cut and dry, but generally speaking, people do want to then move into a moral system and, and basically try to do the right thing and be a good person. I've met that, I've met that kind of person. Leave the world a better place, yeah. and, they're, and they're lovely people. Make a little difference, yeah. yeah. They can be lovely people. Okay, and then the next one is um, religious. Yeah. And this is, <clears throat> what, taking on some code of ethics or worldview or something without really being regenerated. Okay, so first of all, Christianity is the only religion that does not rely on performance. In other words, in all other world religions, you have to do something in order to make God happy or maybe avoid His wrath. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Christianity, we're the only, the reason that Christianity is so big is because we are the most inclusive of all religions. Mm -hmm. We say to sinners, come, we welcome you, we, we want you to be sinners. In every other religion, you have to, to overcome be, being a sinner before you can be admitted, which mm -hmm. means that nobody really makes it. But anyway, <laughs> that's a different story for another day. But uh, so we're so inclusive. So, but, uh, but backing off that to this religious, uh, this pre-Christian, uh, a moral person eventually comes to a point where they say, you know, I do want to do the right thing, but I, I, I feel this spiritual void in my life. And uh, so they did make a decision that they will, you know, join a church. But in almost all cases, they uh, still believe that they have to do something to make God happy. There's a, that it's somehow based on performance. So they're doing good deeds to please God, and they really don't understand yet uh, why Jesus, the, the simple story of Jesus, mm -hmm. why he came, his birth, his life, his death, his resurrection, and then how they can uh, be covered by That's too the simple grace. for them. They, they, they have to perform. Yeah. I it, think there's a lot of Christians, I, I think I have, had have a streak of that. Uh, we, we all have that. Yeah. Oh, uh, I'm glad to know that yeah. I'm not the only one. Yeah, but, yeah. 
Um, uh, because we have an enemy that's trying to drag us back yeah. into these other systems. But the more mature I become in the Lord, I, I recognize, hey, it's His grace. Yeah. That, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Well, grace is a beautiful thing, um, and uh, there are lots of different ways of, of uh, talking uh, about mm -hmm. that. But uh, I like Ephesians 2, which says, uh, But because of His great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in our transgressions mm -hmm. and sins. For it is by grace, yeah. or God's kindness, that you have been saved. Yeah. Now, th to me, this, this makes so much sense. We're talking about his book, uh, Patrick Morley's book, Is Christianity for You? And uh, we've already mentioned ways that you can get that. I want to move along, but it makes so much sense to me that you go from a secular to the more, maybe I've lived long enough to see it, and yeah. to the religious. And so, you know, you kind of have your checklist Check and you've checked those three off. But when it comes to the point is that I accept Christ mm -hmm. into my life, the Holy Spirit's got to be in that one. Well, that's right. I mean, uh, Jesus said uh, wh when I, John 12, 32, but I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. Mm -hmm. And of course, the uh, uh, people may not know, but the word draw in the uh, original Greek language literally means drag. <laughs> so he's going to drag Ooh, I like us. That. Yeah, that's, that's what the Greek word, it should, it, it, it would interpret very nicely to say mm -hmm. that. And uh, Jesus said, no man comes to the Father, uh, and it comes to me unless the Father who sent me draws him or drags him mm -hmm. there. And so it is the work of the Spirit. And uh, do we have free will? Yeah. I mean, can we resist that? Yeah. But honestly, once God says, no, you know what? You're mine. Uh, he's going to make your life, uh, he will, he will make your life so utterly miserable mm -hmm. that you have no option except to turn to him. And so uh, I, I often say that futility, and this, this uh, apologetic is really, my apologetic really answers this problem of the futility of life. You know, you, you look at all this apparent meaningless suffering and so forth, you know, how do you explain mm -hmm. that? Well, futility is the chief tool by which God sovereignly draws us to himself of our own free will. Wow. I wanted to mention uh, just uh, one more thing here. Because, like I said, this makes so much sense, the way you've uh, just taken us through the four stages, basically. But you also bring up here uh, science yeah. and um, just uh, the questions, if God is so good, why do people hurt? You, you've really, I think, um, addressed everything in there that people, you know, they want to say, say okay, but, yeah. okay, but, and you've kind of satisfied those? Well, the, the, it doesn't answer all of the questions, but, uh, you know, is the idea of God logical? Uh, shouldn't science rule over theology? Mm -hmm. uh, if God is good, why is there so much suffering? Mm -hmm. uh, how can you really stake your life, your whole life, on believing mm -hmm. the Bible is true? These are the real questions that people are a asking, and so uh, I, I, I've, I've come to the, in fact, I think it's probably on the back cover of the book, but I think it's more important to explain Christianity than defend it. Because in my yeah. experience, more people are confused about Christianity than are actually opposed to it. I think you're right. Uh, we're out of time, except I did read your, your wife led you to the Lord. Yes, she did. Praise Good God for her. her. Good woman. Oh, yeah, that's, that's wonderful. And I just wish that you'd come around more often, but you don't live that far away. So You're a closer. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, I just think this is one of the... Homekeeper's been on the air for mm, more than a decade, mm -hmm. but this is just such an answer yeah. to prayer for a lot of ladies out there. I've prayed a long time. Well, so. tell them to let you know they want me back. Okay. And I'll come. No question. Yeah. Stay with me. I have a couple things to say before we have to say goodbye. Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. Well, I would like for you to know that... Uh, 
Dr. Patrick Marley is welcome here anytime. It's such a wonderful, great ministry that he has, and I'm glad to bring it to you. And the only way we do that is because we are viewer supported. So, uh, friend, we're going to put up the 800 number and our address. And if you would like to send an offering, that's the way you can do it 1 800 229 0059. Or our box number is 6922 Clearwater, Florida 33758. And we would appreciate it so very much. And of course, all those gifts are tax deductible, at least at the present. And we thank you for anything that you can do. I've been listening to a beautiful song from the musical Les Miserables called Bring Him Home. And the first line says, God on high, hear my prayer. In my need, you've always been there. And you know when that becomes a reality is, is after you've lived a while. <laughs> because sometimes in circumstances you think, well, God's not there. And usually that's because he does not answer a prayer according to our will. Um, we consider prayers really answered when they're answered according to our will and our wishes. But God answers prayers his own way. And then when you live long enough, you can look back and see absolutely uh, he was right on every time. And that's where I am today, you know. It's kind of fun to look back. I've had a whole life in ministry. I was married to a minister. I was a minister of music, and I traveled for 20 years in a preaching ministry. And now I'm sitting here, kind of consider myself that older woman teaching the younger women. And then to look back and say, in my need, you've always been there. You always did the right thing. That's the kind of God we serve. And if you are not connected to him, the only way is through Jesus Christ. And as we're about to go off the air, I just encourage you, why don't you kneel down and ask him to come into your heart and ask him to make a way for you because in your need, he will always be there. Please join me next time remembering no higher calling and that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you would like a video copy of today's Homekeepers program for just $19.95, call 1-800-229-0059 for credit card orders or send a gift of at least $19.95 to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. Be sure to note the program number which appears on your screen.